Team Fortress 2 spent 9 years in active development. By the time it reached release, Valve had cut or benched a substantial amount of classes, weapons and mechanics. This design philosophy of throwing everything at the wall would continue for over a decade, leaving behind a stream of outrageous, mediocre or outright unworkable concepts. I'll be starting with some fairly well known assets and moving backwards to the insane, more obscure trivia about the game we all love. Scouts come and get me torn. This scrapped animation saw the scout put his arms out and just kinda do his thing. I feel like this would have been the new Schadenfreude, overused and abused in all lobbies. No matter how many great kill cams this taunt would have created, it's probably better existing as a community meme. Guide rails were briefly added to the two fort courtyards in a February 2010 patch. Their purpose was, and I quote, to prevent players from falling off and getting lost on the way to the intel. Unfortunately, this would usher in an era of rail camping, where players would abuse the awkward entrances to the courtyard and drop down on attackers for easy kills. The rails were removed a few months down the line after sustained community backlash. For those of you who hate laggy spies, the face stab knife was an actual developed weapon which would backstab players but from the front. There's even an associated blog post about how atrocious this idea was, with Valve confident it was terrible from the start but open to playtesting. Allegedly, the idea came from one of the team's spy players. Go figure. Gabe Newell removes Ubers. During pre-release playtests, Gabe Newell supposedly complained about dying too much to the medic's Uber, causing the medic class to be disabled for any future playtests featuring Gabe. Given my own experience with Spy players and Ubers, this makes more sense when you realise Spy is Gaben's favourite class. For a very brief period after Granary's release, it lacked the fire shipping containers on either side of the point. After multiple complaints from scout players culminated in an entire steam group movement aimed at Valve, a rival soldier steam group was founded, basically telling scouts to get good and find their own shipping containers. Valve would eventually acquiesce, modifying the map to the triple container format we know today. Sam's Hat. This all-class cosmetic would have been released alongside Max's Severed Head, the Lugamorph, and the Big Kill as part of the week-long cross-promotion for purchasing Sam and Max the Devil's Playhouse on Steam. It was cut due to the modding team being unable to fit the thing onto every Merc's head properly. This one's of particular interest to me as it ended up being replaced by the Bloodhound, which would become Flynn's signature hat in the award-losing journalist series. Egypt Mud Version a scrapped beta version of the map Egypt can be found in the game files with screenshots, displaying an underwater style, possibly meant for seasonal, holiday or splish splash blosh purposes. The viewfinder is an experimental primary weapon for the sniper that was being playtested by Valve. The source code implies its purpose was to tag enemies with a TF underscore glow property, however this was buggy and likely led to its eventual scrapping. It's visually similar to the Shooting Star, which was added that same October, and matches the aesthetic of post-Jungle Inferno TF2, which seems to be Jurassic Park adjacent, bulky 80s technology. The infamous King of the Hill map Harvest was added to the game in 2009. Hightower, an equally popular map, would be released a year later in 2010. However, Valve were unsure of the eponymous Hightower's gameplay quality, and decided to add the tower itself to Harvest for a week-long playtest. I can't have imagined this went well, and half a dozen players known to have witnessed it firsthand were unavailable for comment. The Catcher's Mitt is an early scrapped weapon that would have allowed the scout to catch enemy projectiles and throw them back, dealing the same damage as the caught object. Presumably in the secondary slot, this would have been removed quickly for balance reasons. It does harken back to the trailer number 2 game state, where the cartoonish aspects of TF2 are pushed to the max. The CP Process Midpoint Container Gap this short-lived gap was patched into the map on release day, presumably by a developer. I was only able to find one screenshot, along with some comments in the code when a hotfix went through to close the hole the next day. I hope Joel is doing well. The camera is a scrapped asset found in the Team Fortress 2 and Source 2007 shared folders. It resembles a modified Araflex camera, and was likely intended for use with the replay and or demo editors. Oh he my god! Oh, that yoinky, <laughs> thank you. I actually recognise this model from the cinematic camera add-on in Gary's mod, which I've used in several videos, and had no idea it's technically a TF2 asset. After the release of MVM2 Cities, Valve started development on a TF2 cooperative campaign called Merc Stories. Taking inspiration from the little known Day of Defeat source title, Merc Stories would receive criticism for its hyper realistic war elements, such as intense flashbacks of your previous life while respawning set to moving piano music, and the game mode's tendency to uninstall TF2 to try and simulate permadeath. The Dust is Coming. This was an infamous early version of Dust Bowl where, much like Halloween mode, players could vote for Dust Mode, which would drench the entire map in a dust storm, reducing visibility to zero. This was scrapped for obvious reasons. Also, notable for using a Valve-created a cappella version of the Super Mario Bros. Desert theme. Rumoured to be so terrible, recordings were destroyed on site, and those responsible had their desks filled with sand. Manco Lightning. 
This was a scrapped Halloween mechanic involving lightning randomly striking and killing a player on the server during Halloween enabled maps. Removed for quality of life reasons, including scaring a player so badly, they turned off their monitor and stood under a doorway. CTF Nightfort is an unused version of what would become CTF 2 Fort Invasion, released underneath the 2015 Invasion update. It was supposedly removed because playtesters brought complaints of I can't see anything and the sewers are too scary. A single Valve employee allegedly continued to fight for Nightfort to be added into the game until disgruntled fellow employees turned the lights off in his office and locked him in there.